In this tutorial, we'll examine how to calculate a histogram in SPSS. Now notice in this example, I have the variable exam score, where I have the exam scores for 15 different people in my data set. Now to calculate a histogram, we'll show two different ways to do that. Let's start by doing the first way, where we'll look at Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Select Frequencies. Now here we want to move our variable exam score over to the right to the variables box and then click on Charts. And then under Chart Type, select Histograms. And then click Continue. And then finally, we want to deselect Display Frequency Tables. So click on that, make sure the check mark is removed, and then click OK. Now the SPSS output or viewer window opens, and we have our output here, where first of all we see there were 15 valid observations and zero missing. In other words, we have scores for every single person in our data set. And then here we see our histogram. You know, in the histogram here, notice the mean, standard deviation, and N are presented on the right. So we have a mean of 81.8, standard deviation of 13.51, and there were 15 people, once again, on which the histogram was calculated on. For our x-axis, SPSS shows our variable name exam score, and then it has values ranging from 50 to 100. On the y-axis, we have our frequency. And the way we read this here is, the height of the bar indicates or tells us how many values there were at that location. So notice here we have 50 and 60. This value is right in between. So this is a midpoint of 55. And we have one value that was in this category here. We have one value in the 60, the category with 60 as a midpoint. One score or value at 65. Here we have 75. And we have two values of 75 one value of 80. Here we have 85. So two values of 85. At 90 we have three values. And then finally at 95, halfway in between these two values, 95, we have four values. If you've calculated the histogram before on grouped frequency data, this should be familiar to you. But this value of 60, for example, this really ranges from what looks like here to be 57.5 to 62.5. Or to take another example here, this value of 90, if 90 is right in the center, then we go two and a half on each side. We have 87.5 as a lower row limit and 92.5 as an upper row limit. So while we saw that there were three values with a midpoint of 90, if our limits are 87.5 and 92.5, these three values could be 88 as a whole number, 89, 90, 91, or 92. It could be that these three values were all 92, or it could be that one was 90, one was 91, and one was 89, for example. We could go back to the data and look to see, but it's important either way to understand that uh, each bar represents a range of values. And finally, in this histogram, we see, notice that the majority of the values, or many values, are at the high end of the distribution, the higher scores. Notice how it's peaked here, in other words, and it tapers off as we go. Now, if you think of distribution types, you should recognize this as a negatively skewed distribution. Recall that the skew, it's a negative skew if the tail end goes to the negative end of the number line. It's positively skewed if the tail points towards the positive end of the number line. And since our tail points to the left of the negative end, this is a negatively skewed distribution. And one last quick note, I did say that I was going to show you how to calculate a histogram using another approach as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If you go to Graphs on the menu bar and select Legacy Dialogs, and then go down and select Histogram, and then we're going to move Exam Score over to our Variable box, and then just click OK. And then you'll notice here we get the exact same histogram produced using this approach. So either way will work. Either way will give us the same histogram. This concludes the tutorial on calculating a histogram in SPSS.